What's up guys? Um, today I'm gonna be working on the Audi. I know I showed you guys how to install coilovers. Um, today we're gonna be installing new coilovers that I ordered. Uh, it's been a long time since I recorded the last video, so there's gonna be a lot that has changed. Um, I did hit a curb in the snow on the Audi and I bent a few components, so I just replaced my entire suspension with male control arms in the front and all new hubs all around. Um, with that being said, I did bend one of my hubs, so I'm here at the junkyard um, working on this uh, A4. I'm going to be removing the hub, but in order to get to the hub, I have to remove the entire spindle basically. I'm just having a hard time taking off this axle bolt because there's no drivetrain in this car. The e-brake was removed, so this axle's just spinning on its own. So once I remove that, I'll go home, press my new hubs in with the new spindle, or this junkyard spindle. And then I'm going to go to where my car is. That is my friend Alejandro's house. Oh look, perfect. Here it is. Once I get over there, we'll start putting the car back together and you guys will be able to see all the things I've done to it recently. The parts have been acquired. So I picked this up at the junkyard. I removed the bearing and there is a little slit in there. I don't know if you guys can see that. So that's a sign that the bearing was already replaced on this hub previously. This is the one that I have. As you can see, I have my studs on it already. I did put a lot of red Loctite on these. Um, I'm probably just gonna hit it with the torch, heat them up, and then try to salvage those um, because I need them to run my spacers so I can clear calipers. We have the spindle here. Also pressed the bearing out of this. So it's just ready to go in. Once I get that pressed in here, I can press this in through the middle and uh, we'll be good to go. All it goes. So now, there's still about maybe a quarter inch left to go in that needs to be pressed. When you press a bearing in, you never want to press from the middle because obviously you'll pop it out or break it. But since this is the same outer diameter as that bearing, I mean maybe a little bit grinded down, I'm gonna use that to push it in the remaining um, space that it has. You guys can see, bearing slowly going in. Each one of those little pumps is going in. And that's as it starts to get hard right there and I don't want to force it so I'll call it good there. Yeah hold shit before you loosen it. I swear this is so hard to do with one hand. As you guys can see it's already settled in all the way in the bottom. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna support this bearing from the inside metal, this inner diameter right here. Um, because like I said, you don't want to you don't want to just push that in now that we have the hub We can just press it in there. It goes in a little bit. All right So this is gonna be the bottom support It's gonna be perfect to align with the inside diameter of the bearing. So we slide the hub on It's good enough slide it under Well, it got hard there. It's all you don't want to force it. All right this time. We're gonna hold it and there you have it folks. I already got the other ones done. Uh, this is one of the front ones. All new bearings in those. Yep, all done, ready to go. I'm at my friend's house now and I'm ready to start installing all the new parts. Excuse the car, it is dirty. Um, when I hit that curb, it was snowing out, so it's full of salt. Super dirty. We're gonna be replacing a few things, one of them being my coolant reservoir tank. It has a little crack on the side and it's starting to leak coolant slowly. Let's go ahead and get that replaced, make it look nice. And once I get that done, um, I'm really gonna detail my engine bay and get it looking nice. I have all the trim pieces that belong up here to cover the battery. Once I get this cleaned up and looking nice, it's gonna look really good in there. We have new rear rotors. My front rotors are in very good condition. Um, they were replaced when I got the car. I got some pads right here. Um, I did break my ABS sensor when I was removing the spindle. Um, so there's a new ABS sensor. I did get uh, Bilstein um, rear tie rods. Got all my bearings. We're ready to start wrenching. All right, here's my old tank compared to my new tank. I did break a valve that goes down here. As you guys can see, it stayed broken in there. Another setback. Called my friend Isaac, see if he has one. <clears throat> Most of the suspension is already off since I have this since I have to take the spindles home to press the bearings. These are the Raceland coilovers. I picked these up for like 300 bucks. They are not going to do. I do not like the ride quality. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and take that out. In order to do that, you have to remove you have to remove this entire top hat and it has three bolts, one in the front, two in the back. And this is how you access them. You remove your battery cover panel and I already loosened them, so I'll finish taking them out. 
The other bolt is back here. I do recommend taking the ignition control system or whatever the fuck. Anyways, it's just two eight millimeters right there. Pull it out, get it out of the way. And then that way your ratchet fits in between there. So I got the coilover out. These are the race lands. And these are my new BC coilovers. The reason I didn't like these was because they don't have any real preload setting for the spring. So once you lower the car, it goes down almost like halfway. And when you hit like bumps, you just catch a lot of air and then go back down. As to where these, you can really adjust your preload and your right height separately. That's the reason I got these. This is the rear one. You can adjust the right height of the actual coil. You can adjust your dampening through the top as to where these don't have any of those options. I got the front suspension done. I just need to come back and uh, realign the um, the tie rods once I have the other side complete but I'm holding off on the other side because I have to go exchange my CV axle with its lifetime warranty so now I'm gonna move on to the back uh, I haven't started anything back here so time to remove the old coil over install a new one uh, first I'm gonna be swapping out this ABS sensor so in order to remove this sensor I have to remove a grommet that's in there it goes in through the back seat in through this hole and it connects right here on the harness so I just have to fish that out and get the new one in there well here's the old one and the new rear coil over for comparison i haven't adjusted the right height hopefully that's fairly easy once it's on these springs look like they have a higher spring rate they look thicker than these because these once you lower the car this almost compresses all the way down um so hopefully these don't do that got the abs sensor on so once i install the coil over i'll finish getting that tidied up and bolted up to the rest of the lower control arm once i get this side done i'll complete the other side i'm not going to document all of it just because it's pretty boring stuff pretty straightforward and it's just thing after the next right now my uh i put my rotor on and start spinning it turns out this uh passenger side hub is also bent not my doing but it's bent it's a new day um, i'm outside alejandro's house so since my passenger side rear wheel hub was also bent i decided to you know i've done all this work might as well do it right so I'm gonna run back to the junkyard to go pick up the other hub from the A4 that was there. Um, and that means I'm gonna have to get a new bearing as well, just because when I removed the bearing last time, the inner part of the bearing stayed stuck on the hub. Bearing comes apart and it's not reusable. At least I don't wanna reuse it. I already got a new bearing ordered. We're gonna head over to the junkyard right now. First, we're gonna get some breakfast. We'll get the hub at the junkyard and then come back over here, remove the spindle, get it pressed in, get it all done, and then we'll start putting it back together. All right, we're at the junkyard. I actually found a coolant tank that's in very good condition. I just need to clean it up. No cracks are in it and it has the valve that I broke off of mine. I do have a new one at home, but I don't want to risk swapping out that valve just because I don't really want to take that clamp off right there and I don't even know how I'm going to, if a regular clamp would work for me. But uh, yeah, I'm just going to take that one, return the other one. Uh, I got the part has been obtained. This one has also, it's from the same car. So this bearing was also replaced at one point. You can see the grind mark right there from when they took out the the inner part of the bearing because uh, it always gets stuck back at the audi junkyard aka alejandro's crib i got the spindle off i actually even got the the hub off what's going on over here alejandro just putting back some injectors and shit if you guys need a 2.7 let my boy know me and all my 97 subscribers <laughs> we'll try to help thanks i did get my new tank on already uh filled it up with coolant too uh, I'm leaving it loose just because when I do this side of the suspension, I have to access the top hat bolts. Well, the Audi is complete, fellas. Finally put all the suspension together with my new BC coilovers, my new male upper control arms, new male lower control arms with sway bar link. Um, I got a new CV axle just because mine had a little hole in it and I went and got it replaced under warranty. <laughs> all new uh, CV axle bolts. I need to get those torqued down once I bring the car down. Um, the brake pads up here are pretty nice. They're pr pretty good condition and it has pretty new rotors. For the rear, we got our new rotors on, our new uh, brake pads, and same thing back here, BC coils. I didn't do anything else um, to the rear lower control arms. Everything seemed fine. Hopefully nothing's bent, but I got it diagnosed and. The shop said nothing else was wrong other than the front control arms. Uh, yeah, that just about does it. Time to put the wheels on, bring it down, do an eye alignment, and uh, it'll be good. 
Oh, hang my exhaust. Keep forgetting. Well, the Audi's completely done. It's off the jack stands. I did do an oil change while I was at it. As you guys saw, we did all the control arms, the bearings, coolant reservoir because it was old and it was cracking. I have an appointment on Wednesday to get the car aligned. Once I get the car aligned and to the desired ride height, I will show you guys what it looks like. I don't really want to show it right now just because it's not really worth the reveal uh, with the fitment that it has right now, but we got it all done. Control arms look good. Everything's set up. Um, there's not really much else that needs to be done to the suspension. This should last me a while. That's why I invested the time and money into it. It is still auto, so eventually I will manual swap it. Here's the transmission that I'll be using. Hopefully by the end of next summer, or this summer, I'll have it manual swap, six speed. I was considering building the auto trans. There's a guy in, uh, I believe, Pennsylvania that rebuilds automatic transmissions very well. Uh, he has a KO4 Stage 3 uh, B5 with an auto transit. He launches, he beats it, he drives it, and it seems to be holding up very well. Um, what his kit consists of, I believe, is a torque converter, valve bodies, clutch packs, and a TCU tune, I believe. I'm not sure, but that's a $4,000 setup. Uh, I'd rather just spend $700 here and get a manual swap, so we'll see where, where this goes. Until next time.